What could be so damaging that AMI would resort to apparent blackmail to end Bezos's investigation and presumably keeping him from finding out how exactly they got these texts? You know, that, that really is the question because what we have here in Jeff Bezos's post are pretty detailed letters showing uh, what AMI allegedly had on him. The question is, what might Jeff Bezos have known? What might Jeff Bezos have had in his investigation going after how AMI got a hold of this information, these photos, these texts that they found so damning? And on top of that, Stephanie, why are they continuing to go after Jeff Bezos uh, after David Pecker, the chairman of AMI, has already copped to participating in catch and kill stories with President Trump to the Justice Department, right? I mean, there's no question that the, the, the scrutiny is already there. So why are they doing this? That indeed is the question, what do they have? But to me, this whole story, as you just laid it out in those last two minutes, so fascinating because what you, what you effectively have is you have Bezos, the wealthiest man in the world, the founder of Amazon, going from being the sort of punchline of this sordid affair that either destroyed his marriage or hastened the destruction of his marriage, cast him in a very uh, negative and scandalous light, flipping that script overnight to all of a sudden becoming uh, uh, praised as a hero of journalism who is indicting the American tabloid culture, indicting those who would blackmail and extort. Uh, and, and really recasting himself uh, as part of that larger narrative of the Washington Post uh, and, and the media standing up against that sordid kind of journalism. As a source close to Bezos told me last night, do not poke this Bezos bear. Uh, Kim, to me, it's not a surprise how David Pecker runs his business. We've known this is how the Inquirer operates for years. But in this case, it seems incredibly reckless to put these kind of threats in an email, given that there's a deal that was made with federal prosecutors. Right. The, the cooperation deal had to do with um, the quid pro quo um, to silence a woman who had had a relationship with the president, uh, Karen McDougal. And they essentially agreed, listen, DOJ said, we're not going to prosecute you for the related uh, election and campaign finance violations with this if you cooperate. And the agreement sounds very clear. The deal is completely off if you engage in any crimes whatsoever. Of course, we don't know if that there are any crimes here. Possibly uh, if the information, Mr. Bezos's private information, was hacked. That's certainly a crime. Um, and there's some talk about extortion. That's, that, that's another question, whether there's elements or there's facts giving rise to that. But sure, the notion that there, there have this agreement, the Justice Department is, has them under scrutiny. They were, the, the noose was around their neck and they're nonetheless engaging in problematic at, at, the, at the least type communications with um, a titan of, of this, uh, of the media or you know, Amazon Titan, it's, it's really quite dangerous. And so then the question arises, why? why? Why put it all on the line in this way? What kind of politically motivated charges uh, against AMI would Bezos uh, allegedly have given? And we should remind our audience, AMI does not just own the National Enquirer. They own a number of magazines, including Us Weekly. I remember the first week David Pecker had editorial control of Us Weekly. Uh, he bought it after President Trump won the election. That first issue had a glowing lifestyle article about Ivanka Trump and since has had many, many articles about the Trump family and their lifestyle. Uh, Scott, you tweeted last night, speaking of the president, that you believe he is directly involved in this. We have no evidence of that, but clearly it's on your mind. Yeah, and to be clear, it's pure speculation, but a key tell among law enforcement officials is that when someone is driving 45 miles an hour in the fast lane, that they're hiding something. And the president's silence on this is, is eerie. He tweeted about Bezos calling him Bozo January 4th, but this is someone who never misses an opportunity to mock someone he perceives as an adversary uh, via Twitter. And he hasn't said anything. And I think, that's, I think that's a tell here. And like with a Facebook hack or any scandal involving the president, the only thing we know for sure is that it's almost worse or always worse than we'd originally thought. I think this is going to be one of the biggest stories of 2019, and there are several cards still to be turned over here. Or put another way, 
the president and AMI are both acting like guilty parties right now. Acting. I want to bring my panel in. Republican strategist Rick Tyler and radio host for Sirius XM Progress, my friend Mark Thompson. Rick, you know MI. You know the National Enquirer. You worked with Ted Cruz, and it was the National Enquirer there that was going hard after Ted Cruz with the ridiculous conspiracy theory that his own father was tied to the assassination of JFK. Can you tell me your experience or what you know about this organization? Yeah, it was twice. And I think what's at stake here is, is, is what Bezos is, is doing is establishing that the National Choir is not, in fact, a legitimate news Okay, we knew media, that. Media, all right? But, it, but, it's, but it's an important point. And then when you have the president, who is friends with David Pecker, and he has consistently used uh, that tabloid to uh, strike at his political enemies, he did that with Ted Cruz, and here he's doing it with Jeff Bezos. Uh, but now Jeff Bezos is now is now punching down um, because uh, his letter is extraordinary because he implicates not only the, the president in his letter, but, but not directly. And he implicates the Saudis because the Saudis are the ones who would likely they would be the first person you would go to to say, where did you get these texts? It, it seems to be either from the government or the or the Saudi government, likely the Saudi government. Uh, and that's that's a big that's a big problem. Not Russia. I, he didn't. He didn't mention Russia. But the other thing okay. that was interesting, he actually he actually made himself incredibly vulnerable, and he describes the the text and the photos that AMI has in their possession. Uh, because once you read the descriptions of the photos, there's not a. I, it's no offense, Jeff, but there's no real market for people to say, "Gee, I wish we could see those photos." That's not true. There's a okay. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. There is a huge it, market. It, I'm not saying a personal just, interest. Hey, what you got going on down blunts, there? It but just, it's a huge but it story. But blunts the whole. It blunts the whole. You know, this the, the way they operate. They're like, oh, gee, look at this. Now everybody knows they have it. And and look, it's it. This is this is sorted. And these are the kinds of people the president. Uh, like to likes to hang out with uh, my friend Stephanie Gosk, uh, NBC News reporter, just walked in with a statement received from American media. Mm. Uh, we hadn't gotten a response until now, okay. and I'm going to read it to you. American media believes fervently that it acted lawfully in the reporting of the story of Mr. Bezos. Further, at the time of the recent allegations made by Mr. Bezos, it was in good faith negotiations to resolve all matters with him. Nonetheless, in light of the nature of the allegations published by Mr. Bezos, the board has convened and determined that it should promptly and thoroughly investigate the claims Upon completion of that investigation, the board will take whatever appropriate action is necessary. Okay, that's a wow. So first of all, they stay right out of the gate. Um, we stand behind the reporting that we did. No one's denying that. Right. Jeff Bezos uh, had an affair with this woman. They reported on it. We got that. He didn't say that wasn't the case. Right. Um, but now the board is looking in to the conduct of AMI. That is interesting. Well, do they have a choice? I mean, if if I mean, in, in a real world or in a normal situation, there's accountability in a corporation, there's a board. If someone is going rogue like Pecker is, although I, I don't I, I find it doubtful that he has a board that does not exist of sink offense that wouldn't go along with him. But to say face, that's what you do. You say your board says well, we're going to look into this individual. Well, we don't yeah. know that we don't know that he has a sycophantic board because uh, David you, Pecker has been either in bankruptcy or on the verge of bankruptcy many times, and that company has gone through a number of rescue financing deals. So he might have a board that's not necessarily friendly. Well, maybe not now, but he's been doing this. Isn't it's yeah, just, this, this is, is not a jail. surprise? Yeah. This is what he does, and we've never heard of any board that's worked with him that has looked into his conduct before, have we? No, but his conduct in terms of, you know, hey, Tiger Woods, I saw you walking out of a hotel uh, with a beautiful woman who wasn't your wife. I'd like you to be on the cover of my men's magazine is much different than working with the president in covering up something potentially tied to wrongdoing in winning an election to be the president of the United States. Um, Kim, I, I want to go back to you. The fact that Jeff Bezos was not influenced by M AMI, he was unwilling to say <clears throat> that their reporting was not politically motivated. What does that tell you about what Bezos or The Washington Post might know? It tells me that he's going to be, if he's not already, an important witness 
in the Mueller investigation and perhaps somebody that would testify in connection with the various congressional probes that are ongoing. It certainly seems like for this level um, of exchange, the notion that, oh, I'll come out and just say it was not politically motivated. I mean, why? What is that about? Why was that so so, so important to AMI, we can only speculate on it. But as with other aspects of this sort, sorted Russia slash Trump story, it, you know, you start pulling the thread and more and more comes out. I think in the bigger picture, uh, the fact that Mr. Bezos is fighting back to what some scholars have called sextortion, this idea that you, you take texts or pictures, you hack them or you find them somewhere, and then you threaten people in exchange for something, that, that hurts a lot of people. It hurts people without a lot of money and resources in the way Mr. Bezos has. I mean, it's led to some severe tragedies for the, the idea being I'll be humiliated, I'll be shamed. And I, so, so I think that bigger narrative is a, perhaps an important one. Scott, you Stephanie. tweeted last night. Oh, yes? Yeah, j just, a quick, just a quick point on that. I think, you know, it would be enough, this sort of drama between Jeff Bezos and, and David Pecker uh, over the question of, of extortion and blackmail. But to me, that's really the secondary story. And, and the bigger story is what uh, Bezos insinuates in that post when he effectively suggests that President Trump and or Saudi Arabia might be uh, behind the political motivation for going after Bezos because they don't like the coverage uh, that they've been receiving by his paper, the Washington Post. Now, th th that's an insinuation. It's not an allegation. But I think there is going to be a, a, a sort of bi a, a greater focus now on what those connections are. And in fact, earlier today, former CIA Director John Brennan gave us a statement which said, said effectively, I have no doubt, those were his words, I have no doubt that uh, Saudi Arabia would want to embarrass Jeff Bezos and hurt him financially. I think that is where the, the focus of this conversation is going to turn. And to me, those are the really significant political threads. Scott, last night you tweeted that AMI went out of business last night. They just don't know it. I mean, that's a wow, but why is it now? Why this? Why is this going to put them out of business? I mean, they have been in hot water since they went into publication. The second worst business decision of the last 12 months was the wealthiest man in the world deciding to send out uh, very intimate photos. The worst business decision of the last 12 months in business was a media company deciding to attempt to extort the wealthiest man in the world via email. Mm. This has echoes of Teal versus Gawker, and I think it's going to have a similar outcome. I think the courts and the public are fed up with organizations wrapping themselves in the First Amendment to engage in depraved activity. They have literally taken the, the best resourced, most creative mind in business and turned his attention from disrupting the cloud, from disrupting the book industry to destruction. This is literally, there is now a megalodon in the reeds coming for AMI. This was a terrible uh, business decision on the part of the individuals at Pecker. They are out of business. They just don't know it yet. And not to mention, does not his agreement with the special counsel, don't, when you cut that kind of deal, you also agree, I think the wording is, not to commit any crimes. But the, I mean, think of the, how absurd it is. I've talked to thousands of reporters on, on many stories that I didn't want them to publish, right? And there was never like this negotiation. No. Well, in if, an email. If you give us this, we won't, we won't do this story on your client. Or, you know, it doesn't have, this is not the way the press should function. So I think it's interesting that Bezos, who owns the Washington Post, is going to take down AMI. That would be that would be amazing. Heavens to Betsy! My goodness, great check conversation. My, I check my Amazon order right now. There you go. <laughs> hey, Stephanie. <laughs> yes, Dylan. Yes. Oh, that 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 wasn't me, but uh. Oh, Scott. I, excuse me, Scott. Uh, so just real quick, Stephanie. I think you. I think the and your and Kim touched on this point, and I'm really hoping and you you follow up here. But the best thing that can come out of this is that it catalyzes a longer conversation around the fact that we have a public health crisis from the digitization of our private lives among teens and young men and women. Mm. Jeff Bezos knows he'll be okay. Does a 15 or a 16 year old boy or girl who is sitting and struggling with the mental anguish of a mistake they have made, do they know they will be okay? There is no, it is no accident 
that teen depression is escalating and suicide yeah. among teen girls has skyrocketed. This needs to be a bigger conversation around the emerging crisis in teen depression mm -hmm. and what it means to have our mistakes mm -hmm. digitized. Scott, I cannot that. thank you enough for ending our segment yeah. on that important Powerful note. Point. Powerful point. As a mother of a 12-year-old, mm -hmm. we have this conversation in my house almost 100%. daily. Thank you so, so much, all of you. It's a really important topic. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.